In the early 1800s, luggage maker Henry Gratacap created one of the first firefighter hats. The leather helmet had a long rear brim and curved sides as a shield against falling debris and water running down the neck. Except for a few high-tech additions, this basic design is still used today. Leather is surprisingly flame resistant. When reinforced, it also becomes a remarkable hard hat, protecting from heat, liquids and sudden impact. On this newer model, the accessories shield the eyes and ears too. A helmet starts with four die-cut leather sections. They sew them together to make what's called the skull of the helmet. This piece will become the brim of the helmet. To give the skull structure, a worker folds and sews each section, then flattens the crease with a special hammer. He uses a template to score a sewing line in the leather. Then he uses a powerful sewing machine to join the sections together. He now joins the two halves together, reinforcing them with double stitching. The resulting eight ridges give the skull stiffness and strength. He stretches the leather over a plastic mold and trims excess leather from the ridges. Then he clamps four vice grips to the rim. These attach to a hydraulic jack that stretches the skull overnight. After applying glue to the ridges, he runs them through compression rollers for a tight bond. They wet the brim piece several times to make it more pliable. Then they stamp it with a design used by this company since 1846. But first, a worker inserts a wire that will give the brim some structural support. Then, a temporary plastic cover and a lid to ensure an even spread of pressure across the brim. She stuffs the edges of the leather inside before the press applies 10 tons of force to imprint the design. Next, a worker sews the skull to the brim. He removes the excess leather at the base of the skull and cuts out the center of the brim. Then he removes the plastic mold. To seal the leather, they dip the hats in a vat of hot rosin, a type of tree sap. After 55 minutes, they remove them and let them dry at room temperature for eight weeks. This slow drying process makes the leather about as hard as wood. Drying it mechanically would make it brittle. Now for the inside. They insert a plastic cap to reinforce the structure. The fit is intentionally tight so they use a mallet to tap it into place. Inside that, they add another plastic cap with nylon straps to resist the impact of falling objects. Here, a worker uses an acetylene torch to burn off any loose threads and soften the leather in order to bend the brim and straighten the ridges later on. Turning up the sides is basically for aesthetics, but the longer edge in the back is to direct water away from the neck. After adding a synthetic fire retardant liner, he sands the outer surface to prep it for painting. First, a fire retardant chemical primer, then they use a semi-gloss latex paint in Firefighter's Black or White for the Chief. Or, if you prefer, a clear varnish to show off the natural leather. Add a front piece with the firefighter signature brass eagle on top and some fluorescent stickers for extra visibility. And you've got the right headgear for a hero's job.